swagger. Yeah. You know, and we saw that with Wake. Like Ira Williams caught a pass, showed a little swagger, and that's what neither team has been able to do. Neither team has been real confident. It's like James Bell has settled things down as far as defensive substitutions are concerned. He got caught with some substitution problems in the first half. None so here. Dantzler back to throw. Robbins putting some pressure on. The pass for the tight end is incomplete. Sir Gallus was out there. Robbins was in the face of Woodrow Dantzler. Yeah, he, he's just that good. Fred Robbins, he shows you his, his talent because you talk about him a lot. You don't go a series without mentioning his name. Key game here for Clemson. They lose here and they'll have to run the table of their remaining games to get into a bowl. Tommy Bowden doesn't want to see that happen. Here's the pass to Zachary complete on the flats and he's got the first down. They'll mark him out of bounds at the 43 yard line driven out of there by Kelvin Moses. There are a lot of presidents of bowl committees I'm sure that don't want to see it happen either. I mean they're exciting. They travel well. Yep. I mean great tradition. I mean, why wouldn't you want Clemson involved in it? So it's another first down. First and 10 at the 43. Dantzler again with five wideouts and an open backfield. Dantzler out of the pocket, throws at the last second. He is intending it for Lawyer, but actually he's just trying to get rid of it yeah. before he gets handled. Don't make a mistake. That's the one thing about this young man. You know, thrown into action. He's had four touchdowns in the air, three interceptions, completed 54% of his passes coming into the ball game. So I mean he can toss it. He can run the ball as well. He scored three times. He's done most of this damage since the fourth game of the season. Man, look at the wide splits. Here comes the pass to Lawyer. It is complete at the 36 yard line. That's another gain here of about seven yards. So it'll bring up third down and three. I just love the way they spread the defense. Yeah. I mean they take you way beyond the, all the numbers for, for the wideouts. I mean, that's Crazy. We have three wideouts this time. As Zachary moves back into the backfield. Here's the option, and out of one tackler. Here's the pass, and is out of bounds. And then a flag down on the play. Dustin Lyman putting Dantzler down in the backfield, and it might be a roughing the passer penalty. That was a lot of effort. You know, oh, he's throwing out of bounds. He's Intentional grounding. Yeah. They're going to call on Dantzler. Yeah. Lyman looked clean in his pursuit. Yeah. But Dantzler, I mean, the magician. I mean, he, that that's incredible there. He saved it, and now he knows going nowhere, and he just tried to chuck it out. I think he had good intentions. He had a receiver the in the area. Grounding. Against the offense, at the spot. But when you're there on the field, you make that call. That ball might have been way out of bounds. Well, Tommy, you know. Tommy Biden didn't seem to dispute it very much. I still like the action. As a quarterback, you want to try to save your team some, some yards if necessary. So but, uh, it's a good call. Clemson will be forced to punt. Ryan Romano coming back into the ball game. And so the Wake Forest defense holds. They allow Clemson to move the ball about 29 yards and then say no more. Yeah, but Clemson, they scared the Dickens out of them. They do. You just take a deep breath and say, didn't, didn't get anything that good. Here comes a kick, and it's a beauty by Romano. Austin will try to play fake it and <laughs> with some degree of success yep. a 51 yard punt that goes out of the end zone and Wake will have the ball at the 20 when we come back up three to two. Well the Deacon is at rest <laughs> the offense has rested today as far as scoring points as our score indicates a field goal and a safety all on the board here in the fourth quarter with 1222 left to go. Steve Mark Doc Walker Mike Hogwood on the sidelines. First and ten. Big Forest from their own 20. Sankey back to throw. And he gets it to Chalmers complete. Drops the ball, but it was blown dead at the 27 yard line. They've had a lot of success on first down with yep. that particular play. Almost makes you think, okay, when when do you go off it? I don't know. I mean, that's, you gotta give, and I think we have to give Clemson a lot of credit defensively. Yeah. I mean, a lot of some of these things Jim Caldwell tried to uh, throw in. Is key breakers, but the rest of it, these kids have just outplayed them in instances. Second down and two. And off goes to Kane, and Kane's got the first down easily. Keith Adams and Robert Carswell on the tackle. 
The announcers for this game are selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports. This broadcast is a copyright presentation and the use of this broadcast without the express permission of the Atlantic Coast Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. We haven't had many points on the board. Sankey playing this like a pitcher who's holding the runners. He has a 3-2 lead. Senior from Chicago. Looking at first and ten. Back to throw, going upstairs and down the middle. And it is incomplete for Jamie Deese. And let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. Ben Sankey really upset with the route run that he has really taken over this team as its leader. We talked to Jim Caldwell about that yesterday. On the sidelines, while Clemson's offense was on the field, it was Sankey who was saying, hey, we didn't get a touchdown. Everybody keep their cool. Offense is going well. Really impressed with the leadership Sankey is showing in this game. He's got his team looking at second and ten now at his own 30-yard line, 33 actually. Merritt and Williams are split wide out, but this is Morgan Kane. He's right up the middle. Up over the 40 yard line to the 42. He'll be shy of the first down by about a yard and a half. Morgan Kane, third leading rusher in the ACC. First player to go over 500 yards since John Leach. Yeah, I know this is a broken record, but I don't know why you just wouldn't do that every play. You know, you just have to stop me from doing that. I don't know if Clemson in open field can defend that play. Third and three at the 41. Merritt and Williams are the wideouts. Handoff now goes to Morgan Kane, and he runs right into Chad Carson. And he's going to be short of the first down, I believe. You know, one reason, and Mike brought side. it up, yeah. one reason could be the, the absence of o Ovi Mahaley, the fullback. He's that, that might be it. But, I mean, that's an attitude play. It took a great effort by Robert Caldwell to come up, you know, and deliver a blow. But, I, I mean, just the blows like that, you want to wear your opponent down with. If you keep doing it, you keep doing it. I mean, it, it will pay off for you because you're designed that way. Clemson's defense holds. Fourth down and one. And Matthew Brenny is back there to get the punt. To receive, it's Zachary. You see, you tried one bomb early. You tried to get it all. And you end up having fun. And the ball is down by Morgan Kane. It's going to be down at the 28-yard line. 9.49 left to go in the fourth quarter. No, the score's not wrong. It's 3-2, Wake Forest. Forest by a field goal distance of one. 3-2 over Clemson. 9.49 left in the fourth quarter. Tommy Bowden, sensing that his team needs a little more oomph in the offense, will go with a familiar face at quarterback, Brandon Streeter. Recovering from a broken collarbone is out on the football field. There you see him, a fifth-year senior from Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. He was injured in the fourth, third game of the season, first quarter of the North Carolina game, and he's back at the controls. Out of the shotgun. Pass to the flats. Is overthrown, and is it picked off? No. They say that Duncan trapped it. And it'll be incomplete. Dangerous pass out there for Brian Wofford. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, I, I like, I think sometimes you change up a quarterback. I, I just believe that you, you, you can try some things and not have to feel like you're going to kill the guy's confidence. That was close. But it's a good call by Cherry and his group because that, that did hit the ground. Brandon Streeter facing a four man rush on second down. Now goes to the right. The pass complete to Rod Gardner. Gardner cuts across the field, picks up some nice blocking. Gardner at the 40 and then stuttered as he tried to change direction at the 39 yard line. Now that's what you're talking about. 33 I mean, yard game. If you haven't played in the game in a while and you watch him top of the screen, it's going to come up. That ball's going to be right on the money. Let's take a look at it. Again, Streeter hits him right in the break. Bingo. You can catch it and run. And then it gets interesting. Boy, I love that chip block by Justin Watts. That broke him open. Here it comes. Play again. Broken up. Intended for Travis Zachary. Streeter's pass broken up and almost picked off by Dustin Lyman and also Delon Parrish. Should have been picked off. Well, you get this close to a ball in the, in the center field. And maybe Lyman, but what a drop by Dustin Lyman for a linebacker. Wow. What a route run by the running back. Yeah. But he's moving out of the slot position, by the way. He's there again. The slot to the left side, five wide outs, and an open backfield for Streeter. Back to throw in second and ten. 
Steps up, fires incomplete. Mal Lawyer, the intended receiver, and he is blown up there by Kelvin Moses. <laughs> That's socking it to you. You bet. Those middle linebackers. He's angry anyway, making me run all the way downfield doing all this pass coverage. <laughs> Get something in front of you, and then bam, you pay for it. <laughs> Third down. Three wide receivers to the wide side of the field, two to the left. Nobody behind Brandon Streeter on third and ten. Trailing 3 2. Rushes on, the pass complete, and that's to Walker. And Walker down the middle of the field with one man to beat. And gets caught at the nine yard line. Parrish hung in there with help from David Moore to save Wofford from going into the end zone. Well, you talk about living on the edge. Let's check the slot receiver. Slot receivers, you got two guys here in the slot. Now let's watch what happens. They usually use one of those guys as a setup guy. Well, this time, it's the underneath full receiver. And he gets some help from his friends. Once again, that's the key to that play. Rod Gardner with the key block. We got a player injured, and it's going to be DeLon Parrish who came up to make the play. Let's watch this again. And watch Gardner. He'll come up 23 right at the bottom. See, he gets a block. I mean, he hasn't been touched yet. It's a 31 yard hookup. There's DeLon Parrish, fifth year senior out of Columbia, Maryland. He's being tended to and a key member of that defensive secondary. As you look at Brian Wofford, just caught that pass and took it down. It's a neat offense. I mean, you get third and ten. Most teams panic. They have no reason to panic. They showed no fear. Here's another look at our Bank of America ACC salute to excellence question. Which ACC school owns a conference record for the most yards gained in a single season and the least gained rushing in a single season? The answer, Wake Forest. Deacons rush for a still record. 3,344 3, yards in 1971. They gained a record low 561 yards on the ground just four years ago, 1995. But already this year, Morgan Kane has 728 yards. But right now, Brandon Streeter's on the field as the featured performer. And a fifth year senior quarterback has Clemson moving. Two 30 yard gains on passes one to Gardner, one to Wofford. And now he's First and goal at the eight. And off goes to Zachary. And Zachary is tripped up. His knee went to the ground at the 10 yard line. So actually, he'll lose two yards on the play. 844 and moving. Talk about the game of inches. You get so close, just slightly tripped. Knee does touch the ground. Moves him back to the 10 yard line. So it's a loss of two on the play. Second and goal on the 11 yard line. Streeter. And off Zachary again. Sweep to the right. Gets into the five yard line. And down to the three and goes down in the hold of Michael Klingscale. Well, we watched uh, Clemson on defense in a similar situation. They were able to hold. Really stout and have Wake settle for three. Now we'll find out what the Demon Deacons could do in a similar situation. Third and goal from the three out of a more standard high formation with a double tight end set. Zachary tackled by Robbins. Ready. Oh, yeah. Cleaned up by Brad Smith, but Robbins was the man at the point of attack and he's brought down at the three yard line. Well, that's when you need him. You need your great players. When things are going wrong now he all he does is beat two guys leap over another and make a play. Fourth down coming and here comes the field goal now when the field goal unit comes on it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't mean much. Mean does much. It? <laughs> They've already tried a fake field goal that didn't work earlier. Lazara is on for a 19 yard kick. We're going to kick it this time. The kick is up and it is good and Clemson steps out in front. A three run rally by Clemson makes it 5 3 Tigers with 7.08 left to play here in the fourth at Grove Stadium. Clemson has moved in front. Tony Lazara's 19 yard field goal with 7.08 left to go, capping a 
drive of 70 yards and nine plays. There's Fabian Davis and Chris McCoy back to receive the kickoff. It's going to come right at you. Davis now will track it down two yards deep and come out. Hits the win. Right in time, it comes out to the 23 yard line. But Clemson drives for the go ahead score, the field goal by Tony Lazara. A nine play march that featured five passes from Brandon Streeter, two of them complete the 33 yards to Rod Gardner, 31 yards to Brian Wofford. And that would set them up inside the 10 and put them in business to get the field goal. Well, we talk a lot about special teams. Watch number 31 right there. He sails out and gives up his body and his crutch. And that's the life of a special teams player covering kicks. Chad Speck, man in question, first and 10. Wake Forest operating for their own 23. And the pass shared out, and it is picked off. Dextra Polite picks off the pass intended for Chalmers. Polite coming down the sideline and is driven out of bounds deep in Wake Forest territory. Dextra Polite. Flag Dexter. down. That's a terrific, terrific interception. As he covered the receiver all the way, found the ball late, went up and took it, and then showed us some running back skills. On the first play from scrimmage, Wake Forest elected to get airborne. And they may pay a severe price for it. An interception by Dextra Polite. His fourth career interception, his third this, his fourth this season. Flipping on the return team, 15 yards, first down. Here you are locked in. You fake the slant. Well, not a lot of separation. Now watch Polite find the ball. And there as a receiver, wow. what you've got to do is if you can't get it, you have to, to, to deny him a chance to get it. And wow, he that, didn't do it. That was a one-hand grab. Yeah, but you got to slap that hand down as a receiver. And this moves Clemson back to the 39-yard line, but it's still good field position. Zachary now moving to the right and fights his way to the 35-yard line. Brought down there by Calvin Moses. And now Streeter back at work again. 5-3 Clemson, and now Clemson with the fourth turnover of the day. Each team has had two. Well, now your defense, you have to have quick change artists. They gotta be able to come in and put a fire out. If not, you're gonna be in a world of trouble. Nice to see DeLon Parrish back in the ballgame now for Wake Forest in that defensive second down. Second down. About six. Straight up the throw. Looking deep has a man open. That is Gardner. No. He had it. But the ball had too much air. Yeah, it did. They ran a similar play that Wake Forest tried to run. Ah, boy, if he put some steam on this one. Could have been a touchdown. See the slant, you take it in. I don't think you fake Reggie out, just caught him in a little bit of a bracket coverage. That ball is right in his hand. Yep, right there. Gardner could have had six. Instead, it's third down and six. Five, three, Clemson. Streeter, back to throw, pass complete. And this one's more conventional to Gardner for the first down at the 27 yard line. Man, that's a dart. Rod Gardner from Brandon Streeter for the first down to move the chains. Clock's moving as well. Well, Rod has such an advantage at six foot three, 211 pounds. He runs a slant route on you. You almost have to go through him and pick up a flag in order to stop him. He's to the top, to the wide side of the field. Brian Wofford and Justin Watts. Defense! Defense! Streeter gets the call from the sideline. And now calls timeout. The play clock was down to one second. And Clemson has to use a timeout. With 5.26 left to go here in the fourth quarter, it is Clemson leading Wake Forest 5-3. We are back. And Clemson, they're in their no weight offense, and they decide to go first and 10. And they get it down inside the 20 yard line. It's about a seven yard gain on the play. 
And that was Zachary on the carry for Clemson. So they get off the mark and get a nice eight yards and first down. Well, old momentum jumped out of those black jerseys and jumped right in that white shirt with the orange hat. Brandon Streeter's got him at a rhythm now yeah, with her. They're able to pick up some big plays. He's made some big plays since coming in. Second down and two. This is almost like a free play for him. Sir Gallus is as a wing. On the right side, they're headed right. Zachary cuts back to the left. Kelvin Moses and Brian Ray bring him down. But the clock is moving along. 431 left to play. Now it stops as they'll mark the first down for Clemson. Inside the 17 yard line. The array of possibilities here. Nine point lead, four and a half to play. The field goal doesn't do him much good. Watts split out wide to the right. Gardner to the left. Their wing right in their formation with Zachary and back of Brandon Streeter. First and ten from the 16. And off Zachary. Zachary brought down at the 15-yard line. A nice tackle there made by Simmons. Walter Simmons. Yeah, we got a flag. This may be against Lyman. It may be face base or a rough one. They're pointing it. Wake Forest. On Cherry's indication. Brings the Clemson crowd over on the far sideline, clad in orange, up off their feet. And two preliminary indications here. So it's an unsportsmanlike conduct against Wake Forest. And that's a big penalty. Mark it off halfway to the goal line. That'll take him down to about the seven yard line. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike like conduct against the defense. Second down. Yeah, you really do want all your energy to go on tackling the guy with the ball. That you can't can't allow it. Yeah. That was Lyman grabbing Sir Gallus by the face mask, shaking him out. And Lyman's a classy player. I mean, the guy's playing hard, but at that point, you know, you, you lose sight of the, your emotions. Second down and two. And now stop at your play here. Let's see what the problem is on this particular set. They're double checking the down. Ron Cherry says it is second down. Second down and two. They need the six, they're at the eight. And they lead 5 3. Streeter at the control. Sir Gallus is the wing to the left this time. Gallus, whether this is Zachary, and he is close to the first down, down to about the five yard line, very close to it. Went to the strong side of the formation that time. And it's going to be close. Let's go to the sidelines of Mike Hopper. Rick Stockstill, who's signaling in the plays, keeps reminding his quarterback, Brandon Streeter, to use up all of the 25 second clock. They want to score, but they want to use the clock on this drive as well. Third and inches for a first down. Streeter again, just looking out there, the play clock down to nine. Six. Now to three. Two. And now a call timeout with one second left. On third and one, using his second timeout of the half. Tigers with only one left. This is very well done. It really is. You know, it's all about the chess match. Saw them soliciting for a quarterback on campus last night. Arkansas up by 24 on Auburn. Tennessee pitching a shutout at home against South Carolina. Well, they got a barn burner going in the Big Ten between Purdue and Minnesota. Illinois was coming back at one time. You can't wait to see that score. Northwestern isn't. They're in the fourth. And Indiana and Michigan are tied in. Fourth Big Ten having quite a year. Interesting ball. Ohio State holding sway over Iowa. They're in the fourth. Texas having trouble with Iowa State visiting the Cyclones in the third. 
Back to back weeks, Mac Brown has to keep his troops alive after that big win against Nebraska. Oh, yeah. Second year in a row he's done. Our score 5 3 Clemson over Wake Forest. We have 2.37 left to play. Jim Caldwell sweating this out. Third and inches for Clemson. They're knocking on the door. First down here. Gives him four cracks. Here comes a handoff. Zachary, he looks like he's got it. Tripped up by Lyman. And Zachary is inside the five of the four yard line. So the Tigers pick up the first down. And they have a chance to advance the score here. But Tommy Bowden wants him to get six. See, they were set offensively. I don't think all of the Wake players were actually set before that ball was snapped. They really take advantage of tempo. Tempo with no huddle. They come out on the field and they go right to the, the football and they snap it. First and goal from the four and a half. And off Zachary. And Zachary is getting the call for the most part of this drive and he gets it down to the one. An impressive gain of four. And brought down by David Moore. So it'll be second down and goal from the two yard line. There's the timeout situation. Clemson doesn't need him. Wake will have to make judicious use of theirs as we are under two minutes. Minute 46 and counting. Clock rolling. And Clemson really not in any hurry. Streeter glances at the play clock at both ends of the field. It's down to 10. There you see it in the lower left hand corner of your screen. Streeter settles down on the center at four seconds. He snaps just in time. Hand off Zachary. Zachary pushing toward the end zone. Does he have it? Oh, he was close. Oh boy, very close. And now Wake Forest is calling for timeout. And that's what they wanted. Make them take up those TOs or run that clock. That's right. 120 left to go. Wake takes its second time out. They have one remaining. And now they're facing third down and goal from inside the one. Jim, Jim Caldwell doesn't like the odds on this situation. Tommy Bowden enjoying things. They've got control of the ball, control of the clock. Your source for sports on the internet. JPSports.com is now online. Get control of your information. Each week, we'll bring you previews of our upcoming telecast and in-depth coverage of the ACC. For the inside scoop, all you have to do is log on to JPSports.com, and you'll see a picture of our franchise player, Mike Hogwood. We wouldn't trade him for anything. Maybe something of value, but just not yeah, anything. Yeah, not anything. Right. Third down and goal. We're looking at the ball just inside the one-yard line. There he is. There is Mike Hogwood. He's ready to make the tackle. The dapper gentleman there. Talking to the fans. Yeah. Signing autographs. <laughs> Being a celebrity. Yeah. And lining up post game interviews which we will probably have quite a few here. A minute 20 left to play. Clemson finally comes out. Wake Forest sending a defensive grouping out. Will they get out there in time? Streeter, though, will probably use the clock a little bit. Third and goal from the one-inch line. Streeter into the end zone. Touchdown, Clemson. Brandon Streeter, who just four weeks ago suffered a broken collarbone against North Carolina. Takes it in from one yard out, and in two series that he's been under center, Clemson has picked up yardage in big doses, and the first guy to greet him is Woodrow Dantzler. And that's good, because you want to see cohesiveness on your squad. 21 seniors for Wake Forest, and they are running out of time. And this is going to be Lazara, again for the point after. This, if successful, gives Clemson a nine-point lead, and it is. So the Tigers. With only a minute and 18 left to go in the fourth quarter, take a nine point lead. And considering that we've had only eight points on the scoreboard prior to that time, that is huge. They're impressive. They really are. Because Wake had a nice plan. Uh, they've been really physical, and these kids have never, ever backed off. They have not. Streeter goes to the sidelines. Fifth year senior having a great afternoon. Well, next Saturday, football, and this one's been a cliffhanger this afternoon but Streeter came in and changed the mix made some big plays was very close to an interception 
by Adrian Duncan on a tip ball. That's right. He survived that. There was another one went down center field that Parrish had a shot at, and they didn't make a play. And then their defense comes up with the interception. Um, on that one was Dexter Polite, so he comes up with a big interception and return. So the Clemson Tigers with a nine point lead will kick it away and Chris McCoy will try to break off a return. Wake Forest will get the football back with a minute 18 left down nine and with on with only one timeout. Lazaro with a kick. That's going to be a squiver. Picked up on the run. And that is Fabian Davis and he's going very not very far to the 21 yard line. And that's where Wake Forest will start over first and 10 at their 21 down nine minute 12 left to play only one timeout left. Ben Sankey going to have to pull out some leadership here. He's done it. He's oh he's made plays. Play. Yeah he has. A little shuttle pass to Morgan. That was Kane. very nice but he'll need some, some help from his outside guys. He needs big plays now. Merritt split wide to the right called well. And Jamie Deese to the bottom. There's the pass and it is picked off. Alex Ardley picks it off. Intended for Jamie Deese at the 27 yard line and the door has been slammed shut on the Wake Forest offense. Well that, that play that they've been successful with on first down. We talked about it. They must have run this play at least six or seven times on first down. Now look at Ben Sankey beside himself on the Wake bench. He knew it was a mistake. Yeah he put a lot of effort into this. And it's just not today focus all week in practice is spring ball summer ball two a days. He throwing the ball falling away and you can't do that. And you can't run the same play. That you run on first down with concession and not expect somebody to jump on. And now the Clemson Tigers will take a couple of knees here. Now Wake can stop the clock once, but whether they will or not remains to be seen. Clock rolling, under a minute to play, and now you can talk about what this means for the Clemson Tigers. It gets them back to the 500 mark. It better's their conference record, but it keeps them on track. For that six all important six win formula to get to postseason bowl. Huge win. They go to Maryland, you get a win. Uh, you talked about the game against Florida State, tight. They played Virginia Tech, and I think Virginia Tech is just awesome. Well, they played the toughest schedule in the country. When they finish, they'll have played three of the top ten teams in the country. They got Georgia Tech, as you said, ahead of them. They've also got Duke and South Carolina. So you gotta figure they they'll be heavily favored in two of those games. And of course they'll try their luck with Georgia Tech and that'll be quite a ball game clock moving Wake Forest will make no attempt to stop it. The congratulatory handshakes break out on the Clemson sidelines and it's a very quiet Wake Forest sideline. There's an example of the joy going on in Clemson and the Tigers now are going to pull off a 12 3 win an interesting defensive battle. But when Brandon Streeter came into the game he changed the tempo of this football game. And helped carry Clemson to the win. Streeter engineering two scoring drives, taking it in himself on the second score. And let's go down to the sidelines of Mike Hogwood. Yeah, we're with Tommy Bath now. Congratulations, Coach. Uh, a great, great win, great play in the second. Well, we, we'll we'll close the gap on the rest of them. This kind of great defense. And I'm, I'm glad the defense played the good. They they played great. We didn't we just played good enough on offense to win the game. But we'll win a lot of games with defense play like that. Brandon Streeter out for the season four weeks later he comes in and really added some energy to the offense there. Yeah we forgot to tell the doctors. <laughs> the <laughs> doctors still looking for him. They, they hit his helmet we gave him somebody else's. What does this win do for this team though you're, you're at 500 now and uh, folks really didn't expect that this much and that you've come in and put some new life into this Clemson football program. Well we lost this game last year at home and uh, 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 Jim Caldwell did a great job. They're a very experienced team. They got 29 seniors. And, and they were looking at a you know four and three we're three and four. I thought it said a lot about the character of the team to be playing poor offense when defense to keep coming back. Yeah, keeps those bull hopes alive. Exactly. Two out of three is what we got to get. All right. That's Tommy Bowden his Clemson Tigers victorious here today Steve. All right. Mike Hogwood thank you very much and we'll be back down to the field for you. There's more work to be done. And while Mike gets set up for more interviews at the field here, we'll remind you that the score, Clemson 12, Wake Forest 3, back to Winston-Salem after this. BMW ultimate drive of the game, and it is uh, featuring Brandon Streeter, his second drive and the most important scoring drive of the game. 
as Brandon Streeter came in in relief of Woodrow Dantzler and you see him go in from the one yard line that cap on 11 play 39 yard drive set up by the Dextra Polite interception and the Clemson Tigers were able to climb to a 12 3 lead a defensive struggle and that would be the decisive drive of the ball game and uh, of course standing by with Brandon Streeter doc on the field is our Mike Hogwood and Brandon Streeter didn't even expect to get in the game I understand you told your mom not to come down from Pennsylvania you probably wouldn't play today huh? yeah I told her to take the weekend off I said you know come next week and the rest of the games but uh, you know so she didn't get to come up uh, come down for it but um, you know I got to get in at the end I think she saw it on TV hopefully and how did it feel when you got in uh, I nobody expected you to be back nobody thought you'd ever wear a Clemson uniform again uh, I'll tell you what it felt great um, you know I've been waiting this uh, for this every time ever since I got hurt and, and uh, you know luckily it healed real fast um, uh, worked hard at it a lot of prayers from people helped to heal and um, and uh, you know it, it felt great out there it really did I, I threw all week at practice and it felt good and I just didn't take a hit and I took a couple hits but not bad and, and it's fine how confident were you out there? I felt good you know I felt you know that, that uh, I missed it so much and, and I want to be back out there so bad and, and right when I stepped on the field I felt confident after that first pass was a little wobbly it didn't look good but after that um, I felt real good I thought it was kind of neat that when you scored that touchdown the first guy off the bench to greet you when you were uh, running over there was the guy you replaced Woodrow Dantzler it shows the closeness on this oh, football team there's no doubt you know he's a great kid and, and uh, you know the quarterbacks give each other support more than anybody else and no matter who's in there you know we're rooting for whoever's in there and uh, you know I know he gave me a lot of support and uh, and that just shows how, how together and how close we are as a team well this together and close team Steve Martin has pulled out a win they are four and four and large part to this man Brandon Streeter Brandon thanks congratulations thank Brandon Streeter Steve thank you Mike Hogwood I hope you didn't tap that shoulder <laughs> I mean there's no sense flirting with disaster yeah. there but Hogg's a big guy yeah he is he is talk about what a, a change in quarterback can give a team because really Woodrow Dantzler done a pretty good job of that point. he really did but it gave him a chance to stretch the field vertically and he came right in again he said he'd thrown all week and it showed what I'm amazed is that they were able to hold the ball for close to 29 minutes plus and I didn't expect that they would have the ball that long against a ball control team like Wake Forest. Well, they pulled it out in the last two drives were the good ones, and the interception helped out. And let's go back down to the sidelines with Mike Hogwood for another interview. Well, you heard Tommy Bowden say that uh, this was Clemson defense today, and it was a game the Clemson defense really won. And one of the stars was Dexter Polite, who had a big interception. Uh, that was huge at that point of the game. Yes, um, we had no, we had to go out there and get the ball back to the offense and go in, um, so they can go down there and score. So when they, the, he threw the ball in the air, the sideline was yelling, ball, 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 and I got my head around and went at the highest point because the ball is mine as well as theirs in the air. Dexter, we're going to show the play right now because it is our Amico play of the game. Let's take a look. Dexter Polite coming up with the big interception, and uh, I know you had to feel good when you, when you picked off this thing. Yeah, I felt great. I knew that at that, that, that point out that we had a chance to go out there and get the offense a chance to go score and put points on the board, which is what they did after the turn. When the offense is struggling like it did today, is it give the defense that little extra push momentum knowing we got to shut these guys down? Wake Forest has got to grind it out, ground attack, and you guys did not let them in the end zone. Most definitely. We know we got to come out here on defense and just make plays and um, keep the offense on the field. And we, go, we just got a little thing we call roll call to the ball where there's nothing big. You just go all, all, all 11 to the ball and you just go out there and make plays. Roll call to the ball. I like that. That's what happened with Clemson today. Dexter Polite, thank you. Right. Congratulations right, on Motown. a, on a you, big game. He is excited as well he should be, Steve Martin. Oh, he should. What a play. That was a one-handed grab. That's as pretty a play as you'll see. Well, the key point in that, Steve, is that he heard it from the sidelines, and the guys on the bench were saying, ball, 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 and he reacted to that, so that's really teamwork. Well, teamwork has carried Clemson to the day here. 12-3, they beat Wake Forest. We'll have more from Winston-Salem when we return with more Atlantic Coast Conference football wrap-up right after this. The Clemson Tigers defeat the Wake Forest Demon Deacons by a score of 12 to 3. They up their record now to 4 and 4. Wake Forest now falls to 4 and 4. Both very much in touch with the bowl picture, but both have two more wins to gain along the way. Steve Martin here along with Doc Walker. We talked at the outset of this broadcast about the matchup being speed versus size, and speed won this time around. Yeah, it really did, and speed made plays. And size really didn't. And uh, it's one of those things. It's hard to measure it, but I go back to desire. 
and the young kids from Clemson really showed a lot of desire. Wake Forest played hard, and their seniors maybe pressed a bit, but I thought that they would be successful with that plan. Well, we talked about quickness on the sidelines and down on the sidelines right now. Mike Hogwood is standing by with Keith Adams, who had another huge day for Clemson. He really did, and he knew he was going to have to step up today, didn't you, Keith, with uh, that great ground game of Wake Forest? Well, yes, we knew that Wake Forest had a great ground game, and we just wanted to come out and try to play hard, and we get credit for them because they play hard, and we just knew that we have to, everybody have to try to get to the ball, and that's what we try to do today. Yeah, slowing down Morgan Kane is not easy. No, it's not. We just came out, tried to get all 11 hats to the ball, and we're glad that we came away with a win. What does this win do for this Clemson team? What's the atmosphere like back in there in the locker room right now? Well, everybody's excited with the win, and we don't get ready for next week, and we're just trying to make our way to a bowl game this year, and we just uh, keep on continuing to try to play as hard as we can. Now this defense, did you get frustrated at all today in the offense, not able to move the football, not able to score, or you just know that you guys have to step up and play that much harder? No, we understand that we have a big play offense and they're capable of making plays at any given time. So we just knew that we keep on playing. There was nothing come on and play, and that's what we did today, and we're happy with this win because it was a team effort and we won together. And this team is ready to go into November, earn its way to a bowl, huh? Yes, we're trying to get there, and we're going to continue to take it week by week, and hopefully we'll be there in November. That's Keith Adams, one of the leaders on a really good Clemson defense who played pretty tough today. Our Texas Pete players of the game, offensive player for the Clemson Tigers, Brandon Streeter, who came in and directed the final two scoring drives, one netted a field goal, another uh, one-yard touchdown run that proved to be the clincher, 12-3 over Wake Forest. Morgan Kane, another strong day, 20 rushes, 88 yards. But I think probably the key ingredient there, Doc Walker, is the fact that only 20 carries on the day. This could have been a day with their size that might have been tailor-made for a 30 or 35 carry day for Morgan Yeah, Kane. I really thought minimum 27 carries. Yeah. And sometimes that can vary because their quarterback is very productive when he gets out. Ben Sankey had made some plays for him, and the fullbacks got more involved in the offense today. Jim had a good plan. They probably threw the ball more than he'd like to. And let's give Clemson credit on defense. Oh, very much. So. They, they forced Wake Forest in a lot of situations that they're not used to being in second and long. They're used to, you know, putting the ball in Morgan Kane's hands, let him get seven, and then staring at second and three. Yeah, and they also, uh, when you look at the season uh, overall, they had always been ahead. They had outscored their opponents in the first quarter, and that didn't happen. They were down two zip in this ball game for the first half. Well, let's talk about what the entry of Brandon Streeter into the lineup now means for Tommy Bowden. He's got Woodrow Dantzler. He's got Brandon Streeter. He's very, very strong at quarterback, or does he have a controversy over the last three games? Not at all. And he's got Simmons, who now he can redshirt. So the quarterback <laughs> position at Clemson University is healthy. Dantzler will get a chance to get on the field because I think you'll see him running the football a little bit. You might see him as one of those receivers. He'll play. He might be their most explosive player. He lends more to the unpredictability of this no-huddle offense than anything you might Absolutely. Know. Get him on the field, and they'll even be tougher on offense. Yeah. Clemson, 12-3 winners over Wake Forest. We'll have more from Grove. Stadium after this message from your local ACC station. Look forward to that one. We've seen an exciting game here today, won by the Clemson Tigers by a score of 12 to 3 over the Wake Forest Demon Deacon. Steve Martin here, along with Doc Walker and Mike Hogwood. And Doc, as we look at the, the look back at this game, let's look at some of the points you made at the outset in your analysis and how true to form they came, really, as far as this ball game is concerned. First of all, Wake Forest, you know, trying to get out of second and long. Clemson forced him into that most of the day. Yeah, well, we knew that they would have to get some success. And when you look at what's going on with Wake Forest, three yards or less on first down, 55%. Now, there was one play that Wake had 37 yards on it, or it would have skewed that statistic a great deal. Next, it was not far behind. Well, they were down two zip. That's not a heck of a lot. But in the end, in the final eight minutes of the game, it proved to be uh, fatal for him. And then yards after catch, 169 yards after 28 receptions. Come on, man, that's a ball game. I mean, I'll tell you what, that, there are a lot of plays out there that yeah. Clemson ran that were designed for four or five yards at right. a clip. And two on that last drive, in fact, two uh, on the next to last drive, passes to Rod Gardner and uh, Brian Wofford for Third 30 yards each. Third down passes. Well, they were. And there is uh, Brandon Streeter, and he's telling mom how this one happened. She didn't expect him to play today. Neither did he. He was just cleared on Friday no, to be able know, to play. You know what he's saying? What's he saying? Mom, Mike Hogwood interviewed me. <laughs> I was one on one with Mike Hogwood. <laughs> Here are the final stats. The rushing yards just about even where the difference lies between the two is what they were able to get in the air. The total yardage 
pretty much to uh, Clemson's liking this afternoon. You know, Gary Whaley, our statistician, came up with a great stat. Wake Forest averaged 64 plays against them coming into this game, mm -hmm. and Clemson ran 81 this afternoon. No, that's crazy. Boy, Gary, only Gary could figure those things out. And only Gary wants to figure those things out. That's for true. Let's go down to Mike Hogwood for a final thought on this Clemson win today. And we've talked a lot about what a big day this is for Clemson, but it has been heartbreak. I just was over at the Wake Forest locker room. Heartbreak for those guys who wore black and gold today. Uh, Jim Caldwell told me that there were just too many penalties, too many key mistakes on offense, things that they've got to go and correct as they get set for a November schedule that could still lead them to a bowl game. There's still a lot to play for for Wake Forest. But offensively, they've got some things to really work on this week and some things to correct. And that is a very, very, as you might imagine, Steve, unhappy locker room right now. The schedule does favor Wake Forest getting back into this scrap. They've got Duke, they've got, uh, which will be a tough game. They've got North Carolina, and they've got Georgia Tech on the way out. So uh, it, it's, it's, it's there for them to get six wins, but uh, they've got to get back to business. They've got to want it. Yep. I mean, it's got to be such a desperate feeling that they go after it and don't allow anybody or anything to stay in their way. Well, we've got one more break coming, and then we'll be back here to Winston-Salem. Our final score, this game produced by Wes Craven, I think. Uh, final score, 12-3, Clemson over Wake Forest. Happy Halloween weekend. The Maryland Terrapins travel to Carter-Finley Stadium to take on the NC State Wolfpack, and you'll see it right here on your Jefferson Pilot Sports Atlantic Coast Conference station. The Clemson Tigers come up with a big win today, 12-3 over Wake Forest. For Doc Walker and Mike Hogwood, I'm Steve Martin reminding you that you've been watching Jefferson Pilot Sports' exclusive coverage of Atlantic Coast Conference football.